Hey gang, today we're going to do a classic rock solo. That particular solo happened to be from the song Moving On by a group called Missouri. That was by request. But more than that, it really kind of typifies a lot of what I would say is mid to late 70s uh, rock solos um, in that it has a lot of standard devices and, um, and uh, standard chord changes that were going on back then. So we'll break it down note for note as we usually do. But also, I want to talk more about the typical devices so that when you're designing or crafting your own solo, you can use some of those as well. All right, we'll see it in just a, we'll see in just a couple seconds. All right, gang. Let's go over this note for note. You'll want to download the tab. Um, it's going to help make your life a lot easier. Uh, but first, I want to go over a couple of things. The sound, I'm using a T-style guitar playing out of the bridge pickup. And yes, it's a T-style, not a Tele, it's a GNL, okay, for those of you who care. Love these guitars, by the way, they're great guitars. Fenders are good too, though. All right, <clears throat> back to the regularly scheduled program. So, um, I've also got a fairly overdriven sound. But no other effects. No other effects on it. Um, so, and that's kind of typical of that time period. No chorus, no flange. No, nothing other than overdrive, but lots of overdrive to give you sustain. Okay, um, so that's that. Um, second thing is the chord uh, progression. So I want to go over that briefly. Chord progression is this right here uh, over the solo. <laughs> It's a walk down and then a walk up. And the chords are C sharp minor, B, and A. Now, uh, and then it walks back up the opposite way. Now you can play it open as well. You can play this. Sounds good either place. If you don't recognize that progression, it is a very typical progression from the time period. If you don't recognize it, let me jog your memory. That's right, it is the Stairway to Heaven solo progression, or the Hairway to Stephen if you prefer. Uh, solo progression made famous by, of course, Led Zeppelin, probably the most uh, famous song of the era, uh, of that mid to late 70s era, classic rock. Um, and so, um, oh, and by the way, you can check out my video of that, where I do that note for note, up here, or here, I can't remember which one, it's one of those two, um, where I go over that note for note. but. One of the things I wanted to point out right now is that the in that progression it's going from A minor F or A minor G to F. The A minor scale or the A minor pentatonic works great over that. And that's what Page in fact uses in multiple positions. Uh, in multiple positions. So uh, the guitarist from Missouri is going to do the same thing. He's going to use a minor pentatonic scale, and he's going to use it in multiple positions. Now, one final thing before we get into this note for note. Uh, by the late 70s, the sort of the Clapton position or whatever, a Clapton scale, uh, was getting a little bit uh, old and tired. Now, I don't want to blame Clapton for that, of course. He's a great player. But you know when I'm talking about the blues box, maybe there's a couple of uh, places where you go out of it, venture out, uh, go out of it, but um, all that kind of stuff was really being used heavily. So uh, to get a slightly different sound, people went outside of that scale a little bit and occasionally used what are called diatonic notes or notes from the scale. Um, so if we we're going to use an A minor scale instead, we could maybe use this note or this note. Um, just to give it a little bit different flavor. Now this particular soloist only ventured out of it on one particular note, but it's a note that makes a big difference. 
Um, now, the scale that he used was the C-sharp minor, or if you prefer, another way of thinking about it, I think that's easier, and kind of explains why this key is more common than you think, C-sharp minor, is because C-sharp minor is the relative minor of E major. So if you take C-sharp minor, take C-sharp, and go up three steps, or, uh, uh, I'm sorry, not three steps, a step and a half, or three frets, you'll get E. And uh, so E is the relative major of C, or, you know, you usually say it the other way around, I suppose, but E is the major associated with C-sharp minor. C-sharp minor is the relative minor of E major. So if you play an E major scale, it's going to sound good over that chord progression as well. So, um, without further ado now, uh, now that we've gotten <clears throat> all the throat clearing and preliminar preliminaries out, let's go over the, uh, let's go over the solo in, uh, in a note-for-note -note fashion, okay? Noting the interesting or common licks throughout. So let's start out with this. It starts out down in this position, and much of it is in two different positions, actually, two different pentatonic positions. Um, the first is this position right here, from the 2 to really about the 6th fret. So um, let me play the... Uh, let me play the... We're going to be using that quite a bit, and maybe even some ideas from... Some ideas from that particular box. As well, so this position, this position. All right, so let's start out with the lick itself. Here we go. Here's the first line. All right, so it starts out with sort of um, I don't know, maybe it's. The, you might call it the Riders in the Sky lick. I guess there may be a southern flavor to Missouri, uh, this band. I don't know. Um, but this, this sort of lick right here, uh, pretty common. So four times in a row, we're going to do the same thing. So it's a hammer-on from the second fret to the fourth fret on the fifth string. And that's a hammer-on from the B to the C sharp, mi uh, to the C sharp over that C sharp minor chord and A chord, right? So we do that four times. So you hammer it first, and then you give three um, picks, okay? Okay, after the third time, you do the following. All right. So, um, <clears throat> that particular... That particular lick, um, that particular lick, very common lick um, in, over an A chord. Or, or, or even a B, any of that, over that progression, it's going to work really well. Um, and, and it's kind of like, um, uh, basically, the, the lick that, that's, that I like to think of that as taken from is uh, if you hit, let's play it over A. Okay, so we play the, uh, let me play the open A. And then you play the um, one fret, I'm sorry, one whole step above that, which in this case is a B. Slide up another, and you get to that C sharp. And then... Um, and then we're going to play the uh, another chord tone in A, in this case the second fret, and then two frets up, and then the next note, which is an A. So it goes from an A to an A. That's sort of the thing that it's taken from. And, and if you think about it, it's kind of like the old bluegrass line. It's not as countryfied, but but basically that's what it is. You hear that a lot in rock. In this case, we're doing a slightly different one, going like this. So that's a hammer-on from two to from two to four, 
and then rocking it back on two to four on both the fifth and the fourth strings. Finally going up, sliding up four to six, and hitting the third string on the fourth, giving that lots of vibrato. And then coming back down. Here it is very slowly. Okay, let's transition into the second line now. Okay, so more complicated line. Starts out by adding a neat little note. So we're going to go, th the first thing is this. So that little piece right there borrows from, and here's what I was talking about before. He's venturing out a little bit from the pentatonic, uh, minor pentatonic scale, from that C sharp minor pentatonic scale by going into borrowing one note uh, from the E major scale. So if we play the E major scale in the open position, it looks like this. First note, all right? So, um, so basically, he's going to use this note right here. Now that's not in a <clears throat> not in that minor pentatonic scale, but um, it it really adds just a little bit of flavor into it, and I think makes the solo quite a bit different and a little unique actually, and and nice. So it starts out with this pull off from two to one on the on the uh, fourth string, and then um, two on the fifth string and back to one, and then two on the fifth string and back to one like so. Third time, he's going to play the slide lick. Now we're back to the first lick land that we had. Ending on that C sharp right there. Um, and that's also a very typical line. So. look at the tab to get that exactly um, but but that is a very typical line um, <clears throat> and and transitioning between sliding between this particular position and this particular position using that uh, using that particular device is off is something you'll hear a lot from 70s solos all right um, now I, I ended it by playing this this line right here Now, we're back in this blues box position, but I want to cover, before I do that, I want to show you, you can play it in another position, and that is probably the most typical bend, or the most common bend, and you can play it either on the third fret, on, I'm sorry, in the third string, or the second string. Here's what it would look like in the second string, same lick. Oops, hitting a couple of notes there. Alright, so that happens to be a typical bend on the second string out of this position. Um, that second string bend um, is very, very common and uh, you could easily just play that. I could have played that without having to switch the position as much, but since I knew I was going here, that's how I did it. I don't know how this particular person played it, but I suspect he would have played it like that. Okay, and that's the first half of the solo. The second half of the solo starts out with this, um, these unison bends up in this blues box position right up here that we just transitioned to. This is the blues box position that we're talking about up here on the ninth fret. And all of it, with the exception of one note, again, the same note that we had before, uh, is going to be in that blues box position. Okay, so it starts out like this.
All right, so <clears throat> those first notes right here, those are all, they're not quite unison bends. I'll show you what the difference is in just a second. But basically what we're doing is we're taking on the second string, we're playing the 12, bending that up a whole step. And as soon as we get up that whole step, we're playing the ninth on the first. So in other words, we're bending, and, and you'll see when we get it up that whole step, it's the same as that note. Um, so, for example, if I just play this right here, notice how those are the same notes. So instead of playing that note itself, I'm going to bend it up. Nice little device, and you can use it in a number of different ways. Now, if you were Jimmy Page or maybe Ted Nugent, um, you might not have played it that way. You might have played this instead. Right? And those are what's called unison bends, and those are pretty common as well. The difference between those is, in a unison bend, you strike both and then bend up. You strike both the strings, in this case first and second, and then bend up until you get the tone to be the same. All right. But here we're just bending it up and then playing it with the dead note. All right. Coming down. Okay, so the first one is 12 coming down and then bringing it to the ten, uh, bringing it to the the ninth and then playing the 11th. And then on the 11th we're bending up, down, pulling off to the ninth playing the 11th on the 4th and playing the, uh, the ninth again on the 3rd. Now there's a couple of different ways that you can bend that. One is a short bend like this. That's a short bend. And then another way of doing it is kind of a, a long bend where you bend it up, bring it back down and pull off. Which is what this one is. Uh, Alright, so we're going to end up on that ninth. Now here's where, here's where we are going to use a note outside of that scale, just like we did before, just like this one. Here we're going to play that. It's the same thing, just played up an octave, and um, and um, the E major scale right here, out of this minor pentatonic box, is this. Oops. Okay, so that's the E major scale, it goes along with the C sharp minor pentatonic. Okay, so basically we're pulling off from the ninth to the eighth, and then playing the ninth on the fourth. Uh, so we're pulling off from the ninth to the eighth on the third, playing the ninth on the fourth. Sliding up. Alright, so it goes like this. So that whole line then goes like this. Okay, here's the next line then. Okay, so it ends, and that's the end of the solo. So it starts out with a short, in this case, a short bend. All right, so it's a short bend on that 11th fret third string. And then a few long bends. And then, same one that we had before. All right, here's the last lick. All right, now this is a very typical lick, very common lick, and if you don't know, it's a great one to learn. Um, so in this case, you're, you're going two frets down, and you're going to slide up <clears throat> to our blues box on the second fret. All right. Then what you're going to do is you're going to play the, the first string and back to the second string. And then we're 
playing our same lick that we had before. All right, and that's it. Now, there's another way of playing that, which is also common, which some people call the Chuck Berry method or whatever, but this method works very well. Another way is to bend up on the third on the 11th and then walk up. So either of those will work for this song. I believe in this song he did the slide method, but either way. So there you have it. A lot of licks and tricks, a lot of different bends on some typical notes. You've got the long and the short bends. You've got the position change. You've got the bend on the second. You've got the bend on the third. You've got some unison bends. You've got some double slop slides, and you've got some Chuck Berry action. What, and you've got a one little special note making it a bit of a unique solo. What could be better? All right, gang. Well, I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you learned something out of it. And uh, we will see you on down the road. Bye-bye.